All right, so I made a couple more adjustments. Number one, I locked up my mirror. I'm getting a little bit of bounce from the mirror as it slaps up in the DSLR. The mirror you know, comes up out of the way, it exposes the CCD, and then it jumps back down. In doing that, I was getting just a little bit of vibration inside of the camera, and it wasn't tack sharp. Now remember, I'm going for super tack sharp, shallow depth of field, and letting it fall off. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to kind of create this little bit of what we call, you know, I don't know, you call it romance, I guess, in that you create a little bit of mystique and mystery in the background by letting it go soft. Same with foreground elements. They're nice and soft. They're just kind of like drawing the eye in. But with mirror slap, nothing was tack sharp. So I've got this handy dandy little intervalometer that Canon makes. When I hit it one time, the mirror goes up, comes out of the way, I let it settle for a minute, and then I hit it again. That actually exposes the CCD by just opening the shutter, the mirror doesn't have to lock up, and I don't get any slap, okay? So, as a result, I've got a nice tack sharp image. If you look at this cookie, it is dead on tack sharp right there. The foreground elements are nice and soft, but they're leading you down into the sharp po portion of the cookie. Maybe the front third of the cookie is in focus, and then immediately it starts to fall off and it takes the eye back. This is the kind of stuff that's really simple, but really inviting and really lends itself to making a good food photograph. So a couple other things I want to touch on. Manual focus, without question, I'm going manual focus. I do not want autofocus on. Autofocus off, just go manual and do it yourself. Make sure you, that you are focusing on the things that you want to focus on, all right? It actually is looking fairly nice. This raisin here, I don't like, it's way too big. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And I also feel like I need a little bit more cookie in the background. Cookie, I mean crumble. So I'm gonna add a little bit back there. And again, hit this guy once, mirror comes up out of the way, hit it a second time, and I got a nice, clean, sharp image. Okay. Some of the things that I use are things like brushes. And the reason I do that is because I just want to get in and move a couple of things. This allows me to do a nice little fine macro adjustment without getting in and touching too much of my plate or my set. So, if you look, these guys right here, they're just a little too tight. So I moved it out of the way with the brush. Take another quick shot. And bam, you can see that that one jumped out of the way. I actually like it in a little bit. I moved it a little bit too far. Remember, we're doing really macro movements. So I'm just gonna bring that in ever so slightly and see what we get. Right on the money, I think. So, shot one brings the mirror up. Shot two exposes it. Boom. So, something you want to think about is the way the eye moves. I've talked a little bit about bringing the eye through the entire piece, but you don't want to create bad tangents or kind of weird pieces with the, with the food. And if you look right here, I've created a line of crumbs that's almost it's too perfect. It matches this too much. It's just got to be broken up. I also don't like this big hunk down there. That's just kind of bugging me. It's too similar to this little foot on the, on the cooling rack. So I look at things like that and think, okay, am I creating weird little junctions that which the eye is going to jump around on? And I am. So I want to knock these around just a bit. And I'm still, I'm going to be a little calculated with it, but I'm going to be spontaneous with it too, because I want it to have that kind of feel like it just happened. These are simple little things, but they're incredibly important. It's all about fine-tuning your image. Personally, I think that's a little bit better. The eye still goes in that direction, but now it's not following a straight line of crumbs that just kind of distracts the eye. So it's kind of weird, and, I, and truthfully, I call it forced spontaneity, where you're really taking a look at all the little details and making them look as natural as they can, even though you're intentionally planning them. I mean, we are planning out where the crumbs are going on this, which really should tell you this is all about forced spontaneity, without question. 
So I'm kind of liking that. I want to get a little bit more shadow back up there. And I need to get a little bit of light right in here on this cookie. I want that cookie to be a little bit hotter. So I'm going to do one of two things. All right, so I want to add just a little bit more of that kind of shadow pooling, that little bit of dark light coming in the background. And I'm going to just do that with another card. I'm going to build up on this guy. I'm going to bring this guy right around here and just kind of concentrate that little pool of light right here. The other thing that I can do is kind of work with my window. On my windows, I've got silks that I can pull across and help knock down some light which I'm going to do right about there. But I want to kind of leave that on the front so it doesn't take away too much. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of light coming back into the cookie because it's kind of a little bit dark on this front edge right here. If you look right here, it just needs a little bit of pool of light. So silver cards are something really simple and easy to use. This one's kind of gross, but it's still really good. It actually just kind of helps you get a little bit of dappling of light. These are cards that you can get at any local art supply store. They usually have silver, gold, black, white. Go down there, get yourself a selection. You can mount them to a card. Sometimes they'll come on card stock. Either way, cut them to the shape and size you need, and then you can bring it right in. So all I'm going to do is pop a little light in there. I just want to take a look at this and see where I'm going to catch it. I'm going to catch it in quite a few places. So. I'm going to take a smaller card and I'm going to use my hand to cover up quite a bit of it. And I just want to concentrate on that front cookie. Right about there. And you can see I brought my black card in too far. So now it's, it's in the background. It's creating that nice dark pool, but it also looks bad because it's very visible. So we got to make an adjustment with that and get that out of the way. All right, let's add just a little bit more light on the front. So we'll do it again. We're going to lock up our mirror as always. Click number one. And hopefully you can see that. You can see the ray of light kind of coming off of this guy. And I'm just concentrating that right on that front edge where I need a little bit. I just hold it in and bam. Much better. So I'm going to adjust my crop here. I think I want to bring it down just ever so slightly. I feel like I need a little bit of that. Doesn't have to be crazy to be an effective shot. I'm going to bring this in a little bit closer. Right there. And I didn't get it quite right. This takes a little bit of experimentation. It's kind of fun. Hold it in. And you can literally just watch where it goes. Catch the light, let it off. Catch the light, make sure you got it where you want it. And there you go. Pretty simplistic milk and cookie shot. Store bought cookies right off the shelf. There's very little that's going to have to be done to that shot in post production. It's really clean. The eye kind of moves through it in a nice, natural way. So I'm happy with it. And I don't think there's anything else that I want to do to it personally. What I would like to do is show you the difference of the crop factor with this exact same lens on the Mark IV. So I'm just going to quickly switch them out and uh, we'll take a look and see what the same scene without moving anything is going to look like on the other sensor. We're going with the exact same shot, but we're switching to the Mark IV. This has got the 1.3 crop factor on it. So let's see what it looks like. Same lens. Everything is identical. Wow. 
It's a bit different, isn't it, mate? All right, so really quickly what I'm looking at, this is really kind of an interesting test. That's my original shot back on the Mark III, full frame sensor. This is popping on the Mark IV, which is the 1.3 crop magnification. Very different. I really have a very different feel of the whole thing going on. And it's almost like I'm coming from a different point of view, just being zoomed in that much. And the camera looks a little bit bluer. so. You can tell, obviously we need to go through and do a white balance and kind of make some adjustments here because it's definitely a little bit different. I like it, just a very, very different feel. In fact, I could probably go with this. Like that's not a bad crop. I might do a little bit of adjusting, kind of raise up a little bit and see what that gives me. In fact, let's do that. While we're here, we may as well just kind of futz with it. What do you guys think? Anybody with me? I'm going to throw the mirror card in there, or the reflector card. Let me switch to this guy. And I'm going to use my trigger. Now, I did that last one holding on to the camera, which is really a bad idea. If you're going to do something like this, use a trigger. Because there is going to be a little bit of movement in your hand. Why touch it? Let the camera do its thing without you. You don't want to influence it. All right, so that's kind of cool. Let's move on. We're going to quickly throw a different set together and I'm going to do a horizontal shot in my 14 by 22 format.